Hello everyone, my name is David. This is Demars Coaching. Thanks for joining me for today's video. Um, today's video is about how people seem to not understand what we went through. They don't quite understand narcissistic abuse. They may understand some sexual abuse, some physical abuse, financial abuse, maybe some emotional abuse, but they just don't get it, do they? I've gotten this, you know, for years I've had people ask me questions about this. David, how do I explain it to them? How do they get people to understand I've made videos in the past because people have asked me to kind of a short version, long version to help other people understand so they can send them that video. Hey, this is what I went through kind of. Do you understand now? Um, it's not easy. Um, even though humans are empathetic people, we have compassion. Uh, it's a spectrum. It fluctuates. It vacillates. I believe. Not to get into myself, my own personal story, but I was abused and neglected growing up as a child. And I didn't have anybody there. I didn't have anyone to turn to. Not not either parent, not step parents, not step family, not aunts, uncles, grandparents, nobody. Even had sibling that abused me. Um, didn't have teachers, counselors, anyone to turn to. No one. My, the beginning of my life was about everybody hurting me and nowhere to go and no one to help me. Um, in my adult, the first 20 years of my adulthood was the same. I had girlfriends that would lie and beat me and cheat on me and tell people lies. I would have, you know, maybe even cheat on me with my best friend. I had not that good of friends that would desert me when I needed them or just screw me over. Um, family that would turn on me, not be there for me, desert me, talk bad about me, stuff like this. Nobody. And I've heard from by bystanders my whole life. And those bystanders could be family, friends, um, co-workers, or just strangers, acquaintances. You know, not understand and tell me things like we've all heard us. Why did you stay? Why didn't you leave, right? Why did you take them back? I would have just left them when they cheated on me or the first time they put their hands on me, I would have just. This worked for me. I would just do this, right? We've heard them all. Go ahead and list some more down there if you want. There's lots. These easy, quick solutions, if they even offer any help at all. Easy, quick solutions. Oh, this worked for me. Oh. Just do this. Just no contact. You like that one, right, guys? Just go no contact. I've gotten this from even victims that have healed, according to them. You know, they, they've gone through this stuff. They understand. They know how hard it is. And then they heal and they're better. And then they're doing it. Not listening, not understanding. Just telling you, oh, just do this. Just go no contact. Just uh. Often... Attention is even placed more on the victim than the abuser. More on the victim's reaction or the validity of their story. Judged but no offer to help. Criticizing. Critical. I'm not even talking about victim blaming or shaming necessarily. It's right below that. <laughs> Victims of child abuse and neglect tend to go both ways, tend to be empathetic, overly empathetic, maybe understanding, kind, whereas others tend to abuse themselves. Um, but for survivors, for many, they must, they must or have to eliminate all abusive family, maybe the whole family, or maybe the family eliminated them as they entered adulthood. But some keep or restart relationships with their abusers, their abusive family. And, you know, for those of you who have experienced child abuse, neglect, and got rid of their family like myself, that might be hard to understand. Just like it might be hard to understand why somebody doesn't ditch their boyfriend after they hit him or cheat on them or lie to him. It's, it was hard for me to understand until I've seen it. Until I've seen people 
like I said, maybe maybe they maybe they stop talking to their family for a period of time and they go back and they restart. Um, their mother and father, who maybe abused or neglected them, maybe maybe they grew up a little bit. Maybe they learned something. Maybe they mellowed out hormonal wise. Maybe they're just more friendly, nice, kind than they were. And maybe somebody wants to keep their family in their life, or specific people. And it can work, but it has to be on their terms. I say this all the time, right? But who am I to judge? And if someone that does that and their parents end up someday hurting them again, who are we to judge? I told you to go no contact. I knew they would. You knew they would. Why, why would you even give them another chance? Why would you give them another chance? Well, each victim is different with a different brain, definitely different experiences, and we all react differently. But nobody, nobody can understand until we listen with compassion and empathy. No judgment, no criticizing, trying to understand like everything that you did not understand beforehand, that you understand now. Try to remember that everybody watching this video. Try to remember how it feels when there was no help or no help now. When people didn't listen and didn't have compassion and empathy to understand your story. Try to remember that when someone else comes to you is hurting in their story. Let me know what you guys think of this video, please. Ask questions, I'll always answer them. Uh, if you think this benefits you or could someone else, I'd appreciate it if you share it. Subscribe to the channel, vote up and down on it. Um, but let me know what you guys think if you feel like sharing your experiences for other people watching this video. Um, and uh, thank you. Love yourself first, guys. Bye-bye.